Hi everyone, I'm Denise O'Malley, the founder of You Define Wellness and your host for the Defining Wellness Confab. And as you've seen, we have 49 incredible presentations spread out over 11 days with health and wellness experts of all different kinds of modalities. And I welcome you to this session. Now, this is brought to you by You Define Wellness. And I want to tell you a little bit about us because people are like, who are you? Um, we are a network of health and wellness professionals from many different modalities. We have hundreds of practitioners um, with 130 or more different types of services that they can offer. And we do a background check on all of our providers, a criminal background investigation, um, checking their licenses, their regulations, um, the, the regulatory bodies that they might be affiliated with, and their legal businesses, so that we can bring to you a vetted network of professionals. And we have products available that we are able to help people access education and services. The first is the Employee Wellness Benefit Plan, which is a product for the workplace. It is an employee benefit program to provide access to services. We also have our speakers have an incredible, we create an incredible catalog of health and wellness education topics for the workplace, community groups, um, anytime you need a speaker on health and wellness, check our catalog first because we've got some incredible people there. And starting today, July 17th, we are launching our Healthy Living Savings Card, which is a program for individuals, retirees, the self-employed, um, employees of companies who don't have this program in place to be able to access services at a discount. We also, and I am having issues with my mouse, so I apologize for any delay that you might be seeing on your end. Uh, the one thing that has brought us all together is really the Holistic Healing Workplace Crisis Support Team. This is a team that when crisis hits the workplace, we can help. Because when crisis hits the workplace, the experts say bring in the counselors, and that's great, but it's not enough. Because we know trauma will reside in the body, and it will show up days, weeks, months, and years later. And so we bring in all kinds of different modalities from counselors, biofeedback, psychotherapists, massage therapists, um, acupuncturists, Reiki, energy healing, and many more. We're doing this confab to help raise awareness that this crisis support team is being formed. And if you are inclined to make a donation, we would welcome it and the PayPal address is set. But the purpose of this session is to have a conversation with Cynthia Lackner, one of the providers in the Udefined Wellness Network, and talking about stress-free living. Cynthia, thank you very much for joining me today. It's my pleasure to be here. I, I love this opportunity to be able to talk to some people today and to let them know about what I do. Well, that's a good segue into what exactly is it that you do? <laughs> Okay, so I'm a psychotherapist in Denver and I also work with people all over the country. And what I do is I help people feel better. And the way I do it is initially I was a cognitive behavioral therapist only, which just means talk therapy. But what I found is the person would feel great while we're in a session together, but the minute they go to their car, now the fear sets in, the sadness, the difficulty, that sense of worry, that powerlessness. So I was so fascinated to learn about a modality called emotional brain training. And I learned that training in 2012. And initially, it was a lot of attorneys in my practice, and especially they were trial lawyers and integration lawyers and divorce lawyers. But it's really morphed into anyone with a pulse. And of course, if you don't have a pulse, then you're really in trouble. And I, I <laughs> but um, the beauty is, is I teach you skills and tools to self-regulate that stress. So let's say you wake up in the morning and you're thinking, hey, I'm feeling pretty good, uh, but then you get a call where your boss is, is upset with you uh, because of something that you he thought or she thought you did, or you had an argument with your spouse, or some, for some of you out there that have adult children, sometimes you don't see eye to eye. It's the people that trigger us the most. It's our unmet expectations that keep us upset. 
So it's not, oh my gosh, what's going to happen if you have stress? It's when you have stress, which is pretty much every day. So I teach people how to self-regulate as they go along the day through things called check-ins, which take two minutes. And I wanted for the purpose of today to speak about brain states. Now, when I first learned this modality, I didn't know what the heck a brain state was. What is it? How do you get one? Do you have one? So very quickly, Denise, you have five brain states, one through five. The fifth brain state is the reptilian brain. And that's when we're having a bad day. That's when we're feeling either numb or we're ruminating, we're really upset. That's where a lot of us live in that brain state because we don't know that we can get out of that brain state. But when we were cave people, we weren't supposed to be bombarded with all this stress. We might have an occasional beast running after us and we could have been somebody's lunch and then we escape and we're fine and we're relaxed. What's happened in our culture is that switch, that stress response is stuck on 24 seven, even while we're asleep. And that's why the cortisol is running down our arms or we're reaching for fatty foods like fried chicken or pizza or ice cream, potato chips. Maybe I didn't get your go-to yet. But <laughs> somebody, no, I think you've named almost all of them. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so we do that not out of shame or blame, but that's our survival circuit. So I teach people what to do instead of reaching for that or that extra glass of wine or that martini or the, you know, online with shopping because some people say, oh, that soothes me. So these are tools that people can learn to use. The fifth brain state, as I said, is the reptilian brain. The fourth brain state means you're still really stressed. The third one means you have both positive and negative feelings. The second brain state means that you're feeling pretty good, but maybe you're a little tired or a little hungry, or you need to have that conversation with that person to feel better. And a one brain state would be if you're walking along the beach, you know, if that soothes you with the waves. I was doing a, web a webinar a few years ago, and it was a live one, and I could see the people, you know, that I was working with. And I said, yeah, brain state one, where you're walking along the beach. And, um, you know, there's waves and everything's soothing. And that woman contacted me later and she said, if I were you, don't bring up that because she said, right now my husband is with his new girlfriend walking in Hawaii. Ooh. I've learned to just say one brain state could be whatever you think it is. So right. that's what I do. So how do you work with them on this fifth brain state? I love the name of it, the reptilian brain state. I, I have to tell you because it just really does seem prehistoric in many ways. It is the, the root essence of where we are um, that we're, we're dealing with. How do you work with someone? How do you work with someone to teach them the, about the brain states? So the first thing I do is we start it with the fifth brain state. So I can say to them, give me an example of when you're really upset. And then they do. And then what's so marvelous about that is I can right away teach them a tool. And the first thing I say for if you're in the five brain state, that reptilian brain, do not judge. Because when we're really upset, we're either upset with ourselves because maybe we did something that wasn't so terrific, or we want to strangle someone. So do not judge myself or others. Minimize harm, meaning don't reach for that cheesecake or that bottle of wine or, you know, calling someone and letting them have it. And just know it will pass. It's a brain wire. When you can couch it that way and see that it's a brain wire, then you can feel calmer. So that's one tool. The second one is called a cycle, C-Y-C-L-E. Mm -hmm. I have them access their anger, sadness, fear, and guilt. Guilt is only what was my part in it, not out of shame or blame, but just if I could do it over. What, what's something I'd like? What's an outcome that might have gone better? And then the third brain state is called emotional house cleaning. Think about how your house would look if you never emptied your trash. Well, that's what happens when we walk through life with all of our stress that we don't know what to do with, right? Second brain state, I teach them tools for that. And one brain state, whatever that is, right? We're not going to say the ocean and the waves. They don't need my help with that. They only just how to prolong it. So I always worry when people are on 
antidepressants or anti-anxiety medication. I'm not a doctor, but what makes me sad about that is yes, it might get rid of your stress and the anxiety and depression, but it also gets rid of your ability to feel joy. It blocks everything. It numbs everything. So that's another thing. I don't, I don't say to them, I'm going to get you off your medication, but eventually they'll learn tools and that's between them and their physician where they can say, you know, my anxiety is better. So that's how I work with them. I teach them those tools and usually within the first hour, they'll at least know two, the, the five brain state, the reptilian brain, you know, do not judge yeah. that one and the cycles. And even if they never worked with me again after that, they can have those two the rest of their life. They can have them immediately. Amazing. So um, how do they work with you? Do they come to you? Are you able to work with them on the internet so you can work with people from all over the world? How, how does that work? So how it works is um, I'm in Denver and I have an office in Cherry Creek. Uh, I give them a discount if they'll work with me on the phone, like FaceTime. I can work with them on Zoom, like what you and I are doing, so we see each other. One of the reasons I like seeing them, like I have a patient I'll be working with it right after this. She's in Aspen, so clearly she's not driving to Denver. And she found me from watching a webinar I did. And I love to watch their body because they could say, you know, I feel sad about, and then they might even be like holding themselves. Yeah. They don't even realize. And then I'm always asking them, where do you feel that in your body? So that's why I like to see them. But I also can have a very impactful session just even listening to them because fortunately I'm able to feel what they feel. And that's even called mirror neurons where you can be pulled up if I'm in a good mood and they're not, I can pull them up with me and I can even do it through the phone. So I can work with people all over the country. I have worked with someone in London. I just had to figure out, you know, if they have a bus. so it's really more a time situation as opposed to anything else. And I love helping people feel better. So you said that even if they don't come back for another session that, um, you know, they're taking tools away, but let's say they do come back. Now, is this a long-term process, which makes a lot of people groan with the thought, oh my gosh, I have to go every week for, you know, months? Or what are they looking at? I love that you said groan because I would groan with them because I used to be in therapy too. The best therapists have gotten rid of their difficult issues, right? So that's why I... I love your question, Denise, because I am not going to be knowing you and then your children and your grandchildren and great grandchildren. I work myself out of a job. So typically it's six sessions. If there's been some trauma or PTSD, or I've worked with people who have had incest situations or brain injuries, mm -hmm. those are people that I am not in a hurry to dismiss and they're not in a hurry to dismiss me. But for people who just wanna learn some tools, it takes about six times because it's just like if you're learning tennis. If you only practice tennis with me when we're on the court and you don't practice when we're not together, you're not gonna to get to Wimbledon. So I try to teach you the six different sessions and you can run with them. And then I've had people call me a year later, two years later, I'm still using these tools, but my mother-in-law just said the meanest thing to me, and I am struggling, or my father died. I thought I'd be able to handle this. You know, I was so close to him, I'm struggling, or my spouse died, or I found out my granddaughter has a disease, or there's a million reasons people call me back because they need a tune-up. So how would they go about finding you? I mean, it's you've been on webinars you're on this webinar as well but you know one of the themes that we have going through this defining wellness compact that we're doing is empowering people to be able to find the help that they need i mean there's no place where you just go and say okay here's how i'm feeling here's who can help me so is it by word of mouth is it that you're having are there keywords that they would be searching for on the internet for you how would they find you well, sometimes people have found me if they type in emotional brain training, I pull up. Uh, sometimes people have found me on LinkedIn. I have gotten a lot of people. I That way, I've done a lot of talks. Um, I've done webinars like through Health Links and people contacted me. I ended up even speaking to 90 people up in Frisco, Colorado just a few weeks ago to people that were in behavioral health. 
uh, I work with a guy, uh, I've done webinars, he's in Bethesda, Maryland. Uh, some of those people work for government agencies. They've contacted me. I'm gonna be uh, hopefully working with a Department of Agriculture as well. So that's sort of, so it is word of mouth. Um, you know, some I was out at a party last week and a woman said, do you have a card? And, um, you know, because people always ask you what you do. And then she said she already told two people and she hadn't even seen me yet. And then <laughs> contacted me yesterday after we had worked together on Monday and she said, I was right. I, and now I've told three more people. So it's kind of, it's just all different ways. Yeah. So let's go back to talking about emotional brain training. Where does it originate from? And how long have you been doing it? Okay, so that's, again, another great question. In 1979, they created this out of the University of California, San Francisco, in the medical school department, and uh, they were talking about brain wiring. We didn't even know that our brain was plastic, so it's neuroplasticity. And you could say, what does plastic mean? If something is plastic, it doesn't, you know, this is plastic, it doesn't break or anything. But in our brain, the plasticity part is that it, absolutely can learn new things even if it's damaged and it can compensate so we can rewire those brain wires so if you had even a trauma when you were young and you think oh that was 30 years ago i'm fine now we can be triggered later on in life and so i walk people through that and we have different tools to be able to go back and rewire it and it's called depotentiate where the more you talk about something and we wire it and do this cycle where you deal with anger, sadness, fear, and guilt, it gets smaller, minimizes, smaller and smaller. And pretty soon you don't even get triggered anymore. And that's the beauty of it. And we didn't, as I said, 10, 12 years ago, we didn't even have the ability to do this, but it was created in 1979. And originally it was um, about weight. They noticed 11 year olds who had an obesity issue because they didn't feel secure attachment with a primary care parent, a mother or father where they didn't feel any attachment. And they spend the rest of their life looking, searching for that in a spouse or in some, a friend or someone who would care for them. And that's something else I can teach them. Maybe you didn't get secure attachment as a little one, but I can teach you to do it for yourself. So it started in 79 about weight and it morphed into what it is now. And a big component of it is not reaching for food because I always say to someone, when you're going to reach for that cheesecake or you know, the potato chips, what is it that you don't wanna feel? What is it that you don't wanna feel? Let's, let's go to that first. And I always tell them, I never say to you, you cannot reach for that food that's unhealthy, but it does exacerbate your anxiety and depression. That's what we're also finding out with many studies now. The foods that you eat can end up really causing you more, more harm than good because it actually triggers uh, in your brain that ability to just want to eat more and more and more. And of course it doesn't make you feel better. Now you still feel bad for the reason that you were reaching for the food and now you've eaten food that made you feel worse. So it's sort of a double problem there. Oh, amazing. So our timer is going to go off here in about two seconds. So I told you 20 minutes goes by really fast and that's been 15. So what is, what would you want to make sure that you include in this um, conversation that we haven't covered yet? All I would like to say, and thank you again for the opportunity to speak to people. I want to be able to tell people that we all have stress and there's no badge of honor having stress thinking, oh, I eat stress for breakfast because it can cause so many diseases, dis-ease in your body. The good news is this isn't a quick fix, but it is skills and tools that you can learn to diminish stress. Now, I'm not out there talking about diabetes or heart disease. Not everybody has that. Everyone has stress, so I want to just leave that with people. And I also want to say that if you contact me between now and August 1st, I would be happy to give you a 20-minute free session just to see if you feel like it's a good fit. And also, I would be happy to give you 20% off of your first session with me. Well, that sounds like an incredible deal and a good segue for me to make sure that I put up your contact information. I encourage everyone to go to CynthiaLackner.com, check out our website, but 
give her a call and, and take her up on that, that offer. And just because this is going to be a recording, I need to stress the fact that this her offer expires on August 1st, 2019. So you only have a couple of weeks to reach out to her and um, take her up on that offer. Awesome. So let me um, see if I can, there we go. Anyways, um, Cynthia, I thank you so much for being a part of this event that we're doing to build up our YouTube library and um, being one of the providers in our network. I And one of the people who came out when our very first opportunity to be of service in the community with the Holistic Healing Crisis Support Team, it was, and I, oh, I just, I just got tingles in my brain um, talking about it. Uh, it is an amazing, uh, impactful thing. And when somebody calls me and says, hey, um, something happened at this workplace and they need help, to first thing I want to do is cry. Um, and then the next thing I, I want to do is reach out to our network of health and wellness professionals and say, hey, who can be of service? And uh, we've had one where it was a suicide of a little boy in an elementary school and we were asked to go in and help the teachers. And we have another one going on right now with um, someone who had uh, died of, lost his battle with cancer, a long time employee of a, a company, and they are looking for ways to bring in support for their employees. So we want to be there of service to the community. You serve with us. Thank you very much for that as well. Anything else you would like to add? No, I just want people to know that you don't have to suffer. And sometimes you don't even know how badly you're feeling until later on you're, you're feeling better and you're like, oh my gosh, it's like when you have a nail in your foot and you just keep walking around with it. You take the nail out and you're like, oh my gosh, I feel better. So I love what I do. And I was just so happy to be on this call with you, Denise. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you all for watching this recording. Catch our other versions at youtube.com. Just search for Redefine Wellness in the search.